We're going to look at the site setup panel in Rapid Weaver. So I'm going to open that with the setup button here in the top corner. So that will open the panel. And there are two other ways to open the setup. And so I'll show you those as well. Close that out and go up to site and view or show site setup. And then finally the shortcut key for this is command 1. That brings up the site setup panel here as well. These are some variables that you want to define basically from the start of your project. And so I'm just going to go through those here. We have three tabs and the first one is general. And so we have the title of the website. And so I'm going to change that here and call that Rapid Weaver Classroom. And we have a slogan. And you can choose to use this or not to use it. In this case, I will just put um, Rapid Weaver Video Tutorials. And then we have a footer field. And so I would put, for example, the copyright and the website. And then below that, email address. And then we can change the actual wording that is used for the email address, and that'll appear in the footer. And so right now it's contact me. Just put um, contact. Then the web address, we go here. This is the URL, your domain name. I guess in my case I could put Rapid Weaver Classroom. And then below we have a few options, site logo, web clip icon, and favicon. The site logo will appear in the header of your website if you choose to use that. And so I can select the checkbox here to enable that box. And I'm going to drag and drop an image into that box. And I have one in the finder that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to grab this one here, drag it and drop it. And now we see it appear here in the panel. We have a web clip icon option and a favicon option. Web clip is for such as an iPhone when you have the icons um, on the uh, the home page of the iPhone. If you want your web site to use an icon that can be customized, then that is what the web clip icon is for. And as you can see, if you hover over, you'll get a tooltip that tells you that they're displayed on the iPhone when book bookmarking the site. They need to be 57 by 57 pixels in dimension and a ping format. So if you want to use a web clip icon for your site, then that's the one that that's the dimensions and the format of the icon that you need to use. And then we have a favicon. The favicon is displayed in the address bar of the browser and um, this can be just like your site logo, just a smaller version. It needs to be an ICO file. Icon file needs to be 16 by 16 pixels, so extremely small because obviously that spot in the address bar is very small. Um, and so I have one as well here, and I'm just going to grab it. I've called it favicon. Actually, I need to check the box first to enable that, that field. And then I just simply drag and drop my icon there. And you can see it's very small, but that's the way it needs to be. So I'll close out my finder. So I've enabled my site logo and my favicon. We can go ahead and look at what this is going to do for the, um, for the layout of the site with these options. So let me add a page, add a style text page. And then I will choose just a built-in theme. Alpha will be fine. We'll just go with that one. Preview. And we can see everything that's been added here. We have the title, the um, slogan below, the logo for the site, and then below we have the footer that we defined along with the link for the email address. And so that is all coming from the site setup panel. So we'll go back into setup and look at the next tab, Advanced. This has some more advanced options that you may or may not want to take advantage of. Um, file links are relative to page is the uh, default option. I suggest you leave it that way unless you have a reason for needing to choose one of the other two options, doc root or relative to the website address. Um, relative to page is the default there. Below that we have display breadcrumb trail. That will um, add a breadcrumb to our footer. And so I'll show you that here. You can see untitled page starts. Um, the breadcrumb and then as we go through the site more links will be added across that so that is the site that is the breadcrumb option for the uh, for the site setup below that protect email address this prevents uh, spam bots from harvesting your email address if it is displayed on the site um, and so in the footer area where we have the contact link by enabling this protect email address this will protect the the address that's linked with this contact link to prevent it from being harvested by spam bots. So that's important to remain chosen. That is the default selected there. 
Then we have enable cruftless links. This is a new feature in Raft Weaver 4, and it gives you a, an example below of what this does. If, for example, you have an index.html document underneath the folder robot, when the link is displayed on your site, it will just display as robot with a trailing slash. And that is just a way to uh, clean up the code. It's not going to really affect the functionality of anything. It's just an option there if you'd like to have a cleaner, tidier code. So that is what the enable cruftless links option is for. Finally, below that, we have a much requested feature that comes with Rapid Weaver 4. This is a Google Analytics a field where you can insert the code that analytics generates for you so all you need to do is simply take once you've set up your analytics account and received the code you just simply copy that and paste it into this box and it's as simple as that so this is a really nice new feature that is um, added with Rapid Weaver 4 and in lesson 3 we will actually do this as a short tutorial on adding the Google Analytics code for tracking visitors that is all of the advanced tab and so finally we'll look at the template tab and that brings up some different options here. The extension by default is HTML, and unless you need it to be PHP, then I would just leave it as the default for HTML. Below that, we have encoding. Once again, I would leave that. Default is um, how the code is taken care of. Um, we have a tidied and an optimized. Um, I would leave it as, de as default, though tidied um, generally works well. It just cleans up the way your code looks if you're interested in, in browsing through the code. And then optimized is more of an extreme option, and I, that can sometimes cause issues, so I don't recommend using that unless you have a reason for doing so that you know of. Below that, we have image quality, and right now it's set to original, and so that is going to be the format of the image that you drop into your project, the original format of that image. If you want every image you drop in to be a JPEG, you can go ahead and select the JPEG option, and then also the ping option is available. And then you have the quality of that type of image here to the right, best being the largest file size down to low, which would be the, the, the smallest file size. High is the default there, and these options are only available if you actually choose either of these image quality or image formats here. Original will not let you change anything, it will just put the image exactly as it is um, when you import it into your project. Below that we have meta tags. This is site-wide meta tags. You can set your meta tags on a per-page basis with the page inspector, and that is the recommended method, but a quicker way to do it in general for the entire site is through the site setup here. And so we can, for example, add a couple with the plus sign. It creates a line. I can add description. And then type this is the description for your, for your site. And then we can add one more. Keywords as the name, tab over, and then keywords go here. So that is the uh, the meta tags and you can remove meta tags with the minus or add more with the plus and you can also set them to expire if you prefer to do that. You can set the number of months, weeks, days, hours, you know, you can get really specific with that. I don't choose to make mine expire so I'm going to leave that unchecked. And then finally sidebar and this is going to be the content that goes in the sidebar of your page. And this is, once again, a site-wide sidebar. You do have the option to set sidebar content on a per-page basis using the page inspector. But if you have something that you want on every page in your sidebar, you can put that here in the sidebar um, of, the, of the site setup. So this would be sidebar content. And it's important to note, and you see this here at the bottom, that the settings for meta tags and sidebar only apply to new pages that are added. So I have added this first untitled page to the site because I've already added that and not yet added the meta tags and sidebar information. This page will not be updated with um, these keywords, um, these meta tags, and, the, and this sidebar content. And actually, I misspelled that. I just recognized. So now that I've filled out this this area of the uh, the template tab. If I add a new page, like we'll just preview and see that the sidebar content is not there. If I add a page now and preview that, we will see the sidebar content added. And still, back in the original page, it's not there. So it's important to note that under the setup panel for your meta tags and your sidebar content, that these, these settings only apply to new pages that are added after you make the changes to the site setup panel. 
but those are handy if you do want the exact same information on every page just to do that here through the site setup so that is the um, the details on the site setup panel and that will conclude this tutorial